What is up guys, Jarv here back today jumping into Destiny 2. We are back with a This Week in Destiny and this week we have Festival of the Lost. As well as this we have brand new Legendary Shattered Realms to contend with, a new Grandmaster Nightfall, an adept loot to chase and also a small preview on what Eververse has available for Bright Dust this week. So if you want to find out more about this week's weekly reset, be sure to stick around and enjoy the video. If you do enjoy the video, be sure to leave a comment and rating down below and remember to subscribe for more Destiny 2 content. We are fast approaching 100,000 subscribers here here on the channel and just over 70 percent of the viewers aren't currently subscribed so be sure to hit that red button and ring that bell to make sure you don't miss an update but without further delay guys let's jump into the video now before we jump into the meat of today's video i want to first ask you all a quick question do you like elves we all love elves and raid shadow legends has plenty of them now be sure to use my qr code or the links down below to download raid for yourself to your mobile phone or your pc now in raid there aren't just dark elves you have high elves too now let's just say these guys don't exactly see eye to eye i mean it's been 700 years and they're still not really getting along but if you ask me i'd always side with the dark elves they're like a legion of evil assassins and warlocks and who doesn't like that i mean look at them this is ray she has the ability to attack all enemies as well as removing all their debuffs and then you have Rian the Conjurer who can revive your dead allies with 50% of their health. Now if you're looking to level up your champions fast, I highly recommend jumping into dungeons. That's one of my personal favourites. You can grind this for loads of XP, silver and artefacts all at the same time. Now there are loads of dungeons to choose from. My personal favourite being the Fire Knight's Castle. And you'll need to set up your team correctly because this guy is no joke. So as well as these Dark Elves, what's new in Raid? Well this month Raid's got tons of non-stop events and activities including an absolutely jam-packed Halloween lineup. Up. Now we're talking big rewards, tournaments against other players and special fragment events and some brand new legendary champions to chase. Now if you want an even bigger head start, all you have to do is hit the link in the description or scan the QR code right here and new players will get this epic new hero. Now this is Chinuro who is amazing in the Doom Tower. As well as her you'll get 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, an energy refill and ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. Now once you follow the link in the description you'll find your extra rewards here in your inbox box for the next 30 days only. Now Raid is bigger, busier and better than ever before so be sure to use the link down in the video description below. So another week and another this week in Destiny and this week sees the reintroduction of Festival of the Lost but not as we remember it. Festival of the Lost focuses around Halloween and a way of remembering and celebrating those that have fallen throughout the course of the year. Now Bungie are due to release a full reveal trailer on Tuesday just before this week's weekly reset but that doesn't mean we don't know anything about this year's event. As we said in the intro we have new masks to chase, new armor to earn and new haunted sectors to complete. Now if we start off with the brand new mask we have eight new masks to earn. We have an Eremis mask, a sweeper bot mask, a new penguin mask, a mask for Ada 1, the honk moon mask, a tanix mask, a pyramid mask and also a shaded titan mask. Now in previous Festival of the Lost events, the masks themselves drop from the chest upon completing that particular event's activity. As we said just now, we have haunted sectors this time around and won't be visiting the haunted forest. Now as well as 8 brand new masks, we have 3 new armor sets. Now in previous events, you could buy these for silver, costing 2,000 silver a set. And if you didn't want to spend silver on it, these would set you back 6,000 bright dust a set. Now for the Titan, we have the Technosaurus set. For the Warlock, you have the Cyteratops set. And for the Hunter, you have the Robo Raptor. Now as for the Haunted Sectors themselves, these seem to contain Hive, Vex and Fallen. Now whilst running the Haunted Sectors, we'll also come across some summoning circles that we need to capture. And upon capturing these, these will spawn new enemies and these will be called the Headless Ones. Now whilst working our way through these Haunted Sectors, we'll be accompanied by Glint, Crow's Ghost. And this is in the aid of field research. Now interestingly, whilst these are called the Headless Headless ones, these are in fact pumpkin headed monsters. Now, it's all thought this could be linked back to the K1 anomaly over in the lost sector on the moon. And in terms of who could be behind the headless ones, we can see mentionings of a Vex mind, even Zifu Araf, and the great Rasputin himself. So, this year's Festival of the Lost is going to be very different to any festival we've experienced before. So, be sure to jump in upon this week's weekly reset to don that new armor and clear those haunted sectors. Now as well as the Festival of the Lost, we have brand new legendary difficulty Shattered Realms. So once again, we'll need to venture into the Shattered Realms and this week will be the Debris of Dreams. Now unlike previous Shattered Realms that you could do entirely solo, Bungie has recommended getting a fire team together to get these activities done. Now much like last week, we created a full guide for the Debris of Dreams if you're still seeking out all the mysteries. So if you're still chasing those down to complete those triumphs for this season, I'll be sure to leave the link to that down in the video description below. Now moving on to this week's weekly rituals, we have a new raid challenge for the Vault of Glass. This would be called Out of Its Way 
This is the Templar Challenge. Now, by completing the challenge, you'll gain an extra chest and also access to the time loss weapon. Now, to complete this challenge, you need to stop Templar from teleporting throughout the entire encounter. And if you can successfully do that, you'll earn yourself the Fatebringer time loss weapon. Now, as with all time loss weapons, these have double perks in the third and fourth column, essentially guaranteeing a god roll each and every time. So if you haven't got a good Fatebringer, or you're still seeking out that explosive payload Firefly roll, make sure to jump into the Vault of Glass this week to get your hands on it. And if it's high stat armor that you're seeking, the high stat armor rolls for this week focuses on mobility. So if you're looking for those high mobility pieces of armor for your hunter, be sure to jump into the Vault of Glass to earn those armor rolls that you're seeking. Now, as for the Crucible Rotator this week, this will be Team Scorched. So if you enjoy priming and detonating your cannons, make sure to jump into Team Scorched for something a little bit different inside Crucible this week. Now, moving on to the Nightfall, the Nightfall for week eight in Season of the Lost will be the Lake of Shadows. And alongside the launch of Festival of the Lost, we also see update 3.3.0.1 launched into the game. And with that, we see some additional changes to Grandmaster Nightfalls. Now, one of the most exciting changes is the increased drop chance for adept weapons in Grandmaster Nightfalls. If you can get a platinum medal, this has been increased to 100%. And with that in mind, that brings us nicely onto what the weapons are for this week's Nightfall. Now, this week we see the Adept Palindrome return in rotation. Now, this is one of the best 140 RPM hand cannons in the game. And with this weapon dropping 100% of the time, as long as you can earn a platinum medal, it's definitely the week to farm out the Palindrome. And alongside that hand cannon, we also have the Swarm Adept. Now, both of these weapons are some of the best options in their class. And with both of these weapon archetypes getting a great buff this season, this week is most definitely the week to farm out these two weapons. Now, moving over to Europa, the Eclipse Zone for this week can be found over in Cadmus Ridge. So if you're still seeking out the Augments way back from Beyond Light, then be sure to head over there to find your target. Now, as for the Empire Hunt, this will rotate around to the Technocrat. So if you're still earning those pinnacles to reach the Power Cap for this season of 1330, then make sure to head over there to get that done. And as for the Exo challenge this will be simulation safeguard and this is one of the easier ones in the rotation and as long as you've fully upgraded your sabotage quests over at varix or in europa this will also be a great source of pinnacle loot so make sure to head over to europa and get those activities done now with the weekly rituals out the way this moves us nicely onto the seasonal challenges for week eight now this week sees just six new seasonal challenges to complete but we'll have many more triumphs to earn as part of festival of the lost now the first seasonal challenge for this week is called aggressive cartography this is where we need to complete a legendary branch of the shattered realm this is followed by shattered blade master and we need to defeat combatants with swords in the shattered realm activity and defeating powerful combatants will grant bonus progress and this is followed by ruthless ley liner and you need to complete the actual alignment activity as well as destroying ether now all three of those challenges will also grant wayfinders compass calibration level so if you're still leveling up your wayfinders compass make sure to get those challenges done to max out your rank now the next seasonal challenge is called display of authority and for this you need to acquire the gambit ornament for the ascendancy now this week will also see a bonus to any infamy that you earn so if you still haven't earned that ornament this week will most definitely be the week to jump into gambit now the next seasonal challenge is called pinnacle and you need to reach the power level of 1330 by earning powerful rewards and prime engrams so as long as you've reached the base power cap for season 15 this will be a retroactive one to complete and the final seasonal challenge for this week is called fusion rifle and sword calibration and you need to calibrate fusion rifle and swords and you earn bonus progress for defeating guardians now if you've completed all your seasonal challenges up until now by completing these six there will be 66 seasonal challenges completed so far this season and if you can complete 75 you'll earn the master of all triumph 2 this will earn you a large pile of bright dust so with us now being in the final few weeks of seasonal challenges it's well worth getting them done to make sure you can earn that bright dust to spend in festival of the lost now with the seasonal challenges out of the way this brings us on to the most important part of the week and it's a preview of what eververse has available for bright dust in week eight now please bear in mind there is an update to the game upon tuesday's weekly reset so this is subject to change now in the main featured section we can see currently it has the ghastly durance this is an exotic emote from the previous festival of the lost event so if you missed out on it you can pick it up this time and it will set you back 3250 bright dust the other item on offer is the Ball Salt Toxic Shader. This is a legendary shader from the previous Festival for the Lost event as well. So once again, if you missed out on it, this will set you back 300 Bright Dust. In the main Bright Dust store, we have the Magnificent Dance. So if you want to add this to your emote wheel, this will set you back 700 Bright Dust. Alongside this, we have the Corruptor in Ghost Shell. This is from a previous event as well. 
So if this one is missing from your collection, this will set you back 2,850 Bright Dust. The next item on offer is the Infected Seeker, an exotic ship from a previous event as well. So if you like the look of this, you can pick this up for 2,000 Bright Dust. This is alongside the Omnigal Mask. So if you're collecting these once again from the previous events and missed out on it, you can pick this up for 1,200 Bright Dust this time around. And the final item on offer is the Fanged Projection. There'll be a bunch of new projections for this year's event too. But if you missed out on this one, this will set you back 1,500 Bright Dust. So there we have it guys, a good look at everything that we can expect upon this week's weekly reset. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out one of the two videos you see here in these cards for more Destiny 2 content. And if you want to keep up to date with everything to do with Destiny 2, be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to jump back into the game as always guys, and I will catch you all again very soon.